ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय वेलकम टू टू डेज रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्री चैतन्य चरितामृत रीडिंग फ्रॉम आदि लीला चैप्टर फाइव मुखम करोति वाचलम पंगुम लंघयते किरियम मृत कृपा तमम वंदे श्री गुरु गुरु दीन तारिणम परमानंद माधवम श्री चैतन्य ईश्वरम हरि ओम तत्सत वर्ष सिक्सटी वन चैप्टर फाइव therefore lord krishna is the original cause of the cosmic manifestation prakriti is like the nipples on the neck of a goat for they cannot give any milk but but the external energy composed of pradhan or prakriti as the ingredient supplying portion and maya as the causal portion is known as maya shakti inert material nature is not the actual cause of the material manifestation for karnar navashai mahavishnu the plenary expansion of krishna activates all the ingredients it is in this way that material nature has the power to supply the ingredients the example given is that iron has no power to heat or burn but after coming in contact with fire the iron becomes red hot and can then diffuse heat and burn other things material nature is like iron for it has no dependence to act without the touch of vishnu who is compared to fire lord vishnu activates material nature by the power of his glance and then the iron like material nature becomes a material supplying agent just as iron made red hot becomes a burning agent material nature cannot independently become an agent for supplying the material ingredients this is more clearly explained by shri kapil dev an incarnation of godhead in shrimad bhagavatam third canto chapter 28 verse 40 yathol mukad vish pulingad bhumad vapti swasambhavat api atmat rena bhimatad yathagni prithag pulmukat all the smoke flaming wood and sparks are all considered together as ingredients of a fire the flaming wood is nevertheless different from the fire and the smoke is different from the flaming wood the material elements earth water fire etc are like smoke the living entities are like sparks and material nature as pradhan is like the flaming wood but all of them together are recipients of power from the supreme personality of godhead and are thus able to manifest their individual capacities in other words <coughs> excuse me the supreme personality of godhead is the origin of all manifestations material nature can supply only when it is activated by the glance of the supreme personality of godhead therefore pradhan cannot be independent of the superintendence of the supreme personality of godhead <clears throat> this is confirmed in the bhagavad gita 9.10 maya dhyakshena prakriti suyate na characharam prakriti the total material energy works under the superintendence of the lord the original source of the material elements is krishna therefore the attempt of the atheistic sankhya philosophers to consider material nature the source of these elements forgetting krishna is useless like trying to get milk from the nipple like bumps of skin hanging on the neck of a goat verse 62 the maya aspect of material nature is the immediate cause of cosmic manifestation but it cannot be real because for the original cause is lord narayan verse 63 just as the original cause of an earthen pot is the potter so the creator of the material world is the first purusha incarnation karanar navashai vishnu verse 64 lord krishna is the creator and maya only help helps him as an instrument just like the potter's wheel and other instruments which are the instrumental cause of causes of a pot the sorry verse 
The first Purusha casts his glance at Maya from a distance and thus he impregnates her with the seed of life in the form of the living entities. Verse 66, the reflected rays of his body mix with Maya and thus Maya gives birth to myriad universes. Purport, the Vedic conclusion is that the cosmic manifestation visible to the eyes of the conditioned soul is caused by the absolute truth the personality of Godhead, through the exertion of his specific energies. Although in the conclusion of atheistic deliberations, this manifested cosmic exhibition is attributed to material nature. The energy of the absolute truth is exhibited in three ways, spiritual, material and marginal. The absolute truth is identical with his spiritual energy. Only when contacted by the spiritual energy can the material energy work and the temporary material manifestations thus appear active. In the conditioned state, the living entities of the marginal energy are a mixture of spiritual and material energies. <coughs> the marginal energy is originally under the control of the spiritual energy, but under the control of the material energy, the living entities have been wandering in forgetfulness within the material world since time immemorial. The conditioned state is caused by misuse of the individual independence of the spiritual platform for this separates the living entity from the association of the spiritual energy. But when the living entity is enlightened by the grace of the Supreme Lord or his pure devotee and becomes inclined to revive his original state of loving service, he is on the most auspicious platform of eternal bliss and knowledge. The marginal jiva or living entity misuses his independence and becomes averse to the eternal service attitude when he independently thinks he is not energy but the energetic. This misconception of his own existence leads him to the attitude of lording it over material nature. Material nature appears to be just the opposite of the spiritual energy. The fact is that the material energy can work only when it, in contact with the spiritual energy. Originally, the energy of Krishna is spiritual but it works in diverse ways, like electrical energy which can exhibit the functions of refrigerating or heating through its manifestations in different ways. The material energy is spiritual, covered by a cloud of illusion or maya. Therefore, the material energy is not self-sufficient in working. Krishna invests his spiritual energy into material energy and then it can act just as iron can act like fire after being heated by fire. The material energy can act only when empowered by the spiritual energy. When covered by the cloud of material energy, the living entity who is also a spiritual energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead forgets about the activities of the spiritual energy and considers all that happens in the material manifestation to be wonderful. But a person who is engaged in devotional service in full Krishna consciousness and who is therefore already situated in the spiritual energy can understand that the material energy has no independent powers. Whatever actions are going on are due to the help of the spiritual energy. The material energy, which is a perverted form of spiritual energy, presents everything pervertedly, thus causing misconceptions and duality. Material scientists and philosophers conditioned by the spell of material nature suppose that material energy acts automatically and therefore they are frustrated, like an illusioned person who tries to get milk from the nipple-like bunches of skin on the neck of a goat and there is no possibility of getting milk from these bunches of skin, there is similarly no possibility that anyone will be successful in understanding the original cause of creation by putting forward theories produced by the material energy. Such an attempt is a manifestation of ignorance. The material energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is called Maya or illusion because in two capacities by supplying the material elements and by causing the material manifestation, 
it makes the conditioned soul unable to understand the real truth of creation. However, when a living entity is liberated from the conditioned life of matter, he can understand the two different activities of material nature, namely covering and bewildering. The origin of creation is the Supreme Personality of Godhead as confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 9.10. The cosmic manifestation is working under the guide, direction of the Supreme Lord who invests the material energy with three material qualities. Agitated by these qualities, the elements supplied by the material energy produce varieties of things such as an artist produces varieties of pictures by mixing the three colors red, yellow and blue. Yellow represents the quality of the goodness Red represents passion and blue represents ignorance. Therefore, the colorful material creation is but an interaction of these three qualities represented in 81 varieties of mixtures. 3 times 3 equaling 9, 9 times 9, thus equaling 81. Deluded by material energy, Conditioned soul, enamored by these 81 varieties of manifestations, wants to lord it over material energy, just as a moth wants to enjoy a fire. This illusion is the net result of the conditioned soul's forgetfulness of his eternal relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. When conditioned, the soul is impelled by the immaterial energy to engage in sense gratification whereas one enlightened by the spiritual energy engages himself in the service of the Supreme Lord in his eternal relationship. Krishna is the original cause of the spiritual world and he is the, the covered cause of the material manifestation. He is also the original cause of the marginal potency, the living entities. He is both the leader and maintainer of the living entities who are called the marginal potency because they can act under the protection of the spiritual energy or under the cover of the material energy. With the help of the spiritual energy, we can understand that independence is visible only in Krishna, who by his inconceivable energy is able to act in any way he likes. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is the absolute whole and the living entities are parts of the absolute whole. This relationship of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the living entities is eternal. One should never mistakenly think that spiritual whole can be divided into small parts by the small material energy. The Bhagavad Gita does not support this Mayavad theory. Rather, it clearly states that the living entities are eternally small fragments of the Supreme Spiritual Whole. As a part can never be equal with the whole, so a living entity as a minute fragment of the spirit, spiritual whole cannot be equal at any time to the supreme whole. The absolute personality of Godhead, although the supreme lord and the living entities are quantitatively related as the whole and the parts. The parts are nevertheless qualitatively one with the whole, thus the living entities or although always qualitatively one with the Supreme Lord, are in a relative position. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is the controller of everything and the living entities are always controlled, either by the spiritual energy or by the material energy. Therefore, a living entity can never become the controller of material or spiritual energies. The natural position of the living beings is always as a subordinate of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. When one agrees to act in such a position, he attains perfection in life, but if one rebel, rebels against this principle, he is in the conditioned state. Verse 67, the Purush enters each and every one of the countless universes. He manifests himself in as many separate forms as there are universes. Verse 68, when the Purusha exhales, the universes are manifested with each outward breath. Verse 69, thereafter when he inhales, all the universes again enter his body. In his form as Karanu Dakshai Vishnu, the Lord impregnates 
material nature by his glance. The transcendental molecules of that glance are particles of spirit or spiritual atoms, which appear in different species of life according to the seeds of their individual karma from the previous cosmic manifestation. And the Lord himself, by his partial representation, creates a body of innumerable universes and again enters each of these universes as <clears throat> Garbhodakshai Vishnu. His coming in contact with Maya is explained in the Bhagavad Gita by a comparison between air and the sky. The sky enters everything material, yet it is far away from us. Verse 70, just as atomic particles of dust pass through the openings of a window, so the networks of universes pass through the pores of the skin of the Purusha. Verse 71, the Brahmas and other lords of the mundane worlds appear from the pores of Mahavishnu and remain alive for the duration of his one exhalation. <clears throat> I adore the primeval Lord Govinda, of whom Mahavishnu is a portion of the plenary portion. Purport, this description of the Lord's creative energy is from the Brahma Samhita 5.48, <coughs> which Lord Brahma compiled after his personal realization. When Mahavishnu exhales, the spiritual seeds of the universes emanate from him in the form of molecular particles like those that are visible three times the size of an atom. When the sunlight is diffused through a small hole, in these days of atomic research, it will be a worthwhile engagement for the atomic scientists to learn from this statement how the entire creation develops from the spiritual atoms emanating from the body of the Lord. Verse 72, where am I, a small creature of seven spans, the measure of my own hand, I am enclosed in the universe composed of material nature, the total material energy, was ego, ether, air, water and earth and what is your glory? Unlimited universes pass through the pores of your body just like particles of dust passing through the opening of a window. Purport. When Lord Brahma, after having stolen all Krishna's calves and cowherd boys, returned and saw that the calves and boys were still roaming with Krishna, he offered his prayers. This is from Bhagavatam, 10th Canto. Chapter 14, verse 11. In his defeat, a conditioned soul, even one so great as Brahma, who manages the affair of the entire universe, cannot compare to the personality of Godhead, for he can produce numberless universes simply by the spiritual rays emanating from the pores of his body. Material scientists should take lessons from the utterances of Sri Brahma regarding our insignificance in comparison to God. In these prayers of Brahma, there is much to learn for those who are falsely puffed up by the accumulation of power. Verse 73, a part of a part of a whole is called Kala. Sri Balram is the counterform of Lord Govinda. Verse 74, Balram's own expansion is called Mahasankarshan and his fragment the Purusha is counted as Kala or the part of a plenary portion. Verse 75, I say that this Kala is Mahavishnu. He is the Mahapurusha who is the source of other Purushas and who is all pervading. Verse 76, Garbhodakshai and Kshirodakshai are both called Purushas. They are plenary portions of Karanodakshai Vishnu. The first Purusha, who is the abode of all the universes. Purport, the symptoms of the Purusha are described in the Lagu Bhagavata Amrita. While describing the incarnations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the author is quoted from the Vishnu Puran 6.8.59, where it is said, Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto Purushottam Lord Krishna who is always free from the contamination of the six material dualities, whose plenary expansion Mahavishnu glances over matter to create the cosmic manifestation 
who expands himself in various transcendental forms, all of which are one and the same, who is the master of all living entities, who is always free and liberated from the contamination of material energy, and who, when he appears in this material world, seems one of us all. Although he has an eternally spiritual, blissful, transcendental form, in summarizing this statement, Rupa Goswami has concluded that the plenary expansion of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who acts in cooperation with the material energy, is called Purusha. Verse 77, Vishnu has three forms called Purushas. The first Mahavishnu is the creator of the total material energy Mahat. The second is Garbhodakshai Vishnu, who is situated within each universe. And the third is Kshirodakshai Vishnu, who lives in the heart of every living being. He who knows these three becomes liberated from the clutches of Maya. But this verse appears in the Lagu Bhagavatam, Bhagavatamrita Purva. 2.9 where it has been quoted from the Saprata Tantra. Verse 78 Although Karma Dakshai Vishnu is called the Kala of Lord Krishna, he is the source of Matsya, Kurma, and other incarnations. Verse 79 All these incarnations of Godhead are either plenary portions or parts of the plenary portions of the Purushavtars. But Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead himself. In every age he protects the world through his different creatures when the world is disturb disturbed by the enemies of Indra. But this quotation is from Srimad Bhagavatam 1.3.28. Ete chamsha kala pumsa krishna stu bhagwan swayam indrari vyakulam lokam vidayanti yuge yuge. This is the famous verse in Chaitanya Charitamrit as verse 79 of chapter 5. This is from Shimad Bhag, taken from Shimad Bhagavatam 1.3.28. So thank you for joining. We will continue our reading next time from here. Hari Amtatsar. Hare Krishna.